Welcome back everyone, this is Heroes Mixed Sparks again, and it's time to finish up the car for our racing game. Now we've done a lot of work making our car look nicer, using colors and materials, make it look more like a real car. But there are some other ways we can add some more detail to the car, make it look nicer. A really neat way to add a lot of surface detail for cheap is by using decals. A decal is basically a picture you put on the side of a part. I already have a couple decals uploaded to Roblox. I'm going to insert them into my game by clicking on the Insert tab. I my models to pull up the toolbox. And for this drop down, I'm going to click on My Decals. You can see I have a couple in here already. If you need decals and don't feel like making them, you can always use the search tool. And that'll pull up a whole bunch of decals and pictures that other Roblox users have uploaded and you can use them in your game for free. Here I've already got the decals I need, and to add them into our game is really simple. I'm just gonna click on the decal I want. In this case, I'm gonna pick the hubcap. I'm gonna select the side of the wheels, put it on. I think it looks much better already. I'm just gonna repeat the process for all the other wheels. And there we go. Again, really nice and easy way of adding some pizzazz to your game. It would be much harder to do with parts and would take a lot of time. The decal makes it nice, clean, simple, and easy. Also going to add the Roblox logo to various parts of our car. Just to give it some, make it look like a nice race car, nice branding on the side. There we go. Really nice and easy way to add some detail. One last thing I think this car is missing. I think a windshield would be a nice, nice thing to add. Make sure the wind isn't blowing in the driver's face. I'll close the tool box for now. I'm going to use our wedge tool that we, that we used earlier. I'm going to move it in a position in front of my car. Use the scale tool to make sure that it's sized nicely. Undo. Didn't want to drag that part out. And again, with the color material, I'm going to make it look a little more glassy. Change the color to blue. Material, we don't have a glass, but maybe something like ice will work well. This looks like an okay shape, but it doesn't look much like a windshield because you can't see through it at all. Unfortunately, we can change how see-through a block is through its transparency property. Now to adjust this, we're going to go to the View tab. Open up the Properties windows again if you don't still have it open from earlier. You'll notice, we make sure that we have the windshield selected. One of the top properties we have is Transparency. Now Transparency can be any number between 0 and 1. It has to be a decimal. 0 means the part will be completely opaque. You can't see through it at all. That's what it's set to now. If we set it to 1, it will be completely invisible and you won't be able to see it whatsoever. I want to make sure we still see the see the part. So I'm going to set it somewhere in the middle, let's say 0.5. There we go. You can still see that the part is there, but it's, you know, we can see through it. It actually looks like glass. Well, I think our car is looking really great. Now we've been working mostly on the aesthetics of the car. It's all well and good. We would definitely want to make sure the car looks nice. But we also need to change how the car handles. Because after all, at the end of the day, we are making a game. We want to make sure the car works the way that we expect it to, the way that we want. Now, to adjust to any kind of way that the vehicle controls, all we have to do is click on the vehicle seat. It's that part we added a long time ago. Open up the Properties tab, in case you have closed it. We're going to look at the properties in Control. In particular, we're going to look at Max Speed, Torque, and Turn Speed. Now what these do, in order is max speed is pretty much how it sounds. It's how fast your car can go when it's when you've been accelerating for a while. It's the top speed. 25 is a nice kind of safe handling speed, but it feels a little bit sluggish to me. I'm gonna bump it up to 60, a little bit more than twice as fast. You can certainly make this higher if you want, but you'll learn pretty quickly that when you're adjusting these values, it's easy to go overboard and make something that's completely impractical and doesn't really work too well. Also going to increase the torque a little bit. 
And what torque does is it adjusts how fast the car accelerates, how quickly it can move up to its max speed. And since it's the racing game, I want people going really fast, really quickly. So I'm bumping this up to 25. Make sure the car speeds up a little bit. Now turn speed is an interesting property. That adjusts how fast the, turn, the car can turn in place so you can round corners and such. I played around with this property a lot. And for the speeds that I've chosen, I found that turn speed at one is actually pretty sufficient. Certainly feel free to adjust this if you want. But if you increase turn speed too much, you'll notice that the car will start to slip a lot and slide. Actually won't handle very well if you increase it too much. So I would definitely recommend being very cautious and uh, conservative when playing around with turn speed. One last property we can change to adjust the handling of our vehicle is the friction of the wheels. If I select a wheel, you'll notice out here under the part part of properties, it has a friction value. And friction, just like in real physics, means how grippy a part is, how kind of sticky, how rough it is. And having a higher friction on a wheel will mean that it grips the road much better, give you a little bit better control, make, you, make sure you can go faster. By default, all parts start at 0.3 friction, which is okay, it doesn't slide around too much. But for this, I'm gonna increase the friction. And I'm actually gonna do that for all of our wheels by just shift-clicking them making sure that they're all selected. If I adjust the friction here from 0.3 to 0.8, since I have all of these parts selected, it'll actually change the friction for all of them. This is a really quick and easy way to change the property for a lot of parts if you want them all, be, all to be the same. There we go, let's give it a bit of a test drive, see how it goes. Yeah, it's a lot faster than a normal car. Oh, looks like I lost my windshield. Must have forgotten to weld it in place. And that highlights something that you want to do with your games. You want to test them as often as possible. And especially when it comes to adjusting things like the vehicle speed, the torque, and such. When you're working in game design, you always have to make small little adjustments to your game. Try them out. See if they work better or worse. Game design is really an iterative process. A lot of editing, going back, because you want to make sure the game feels right. So with that said, I recommend working on your vehicle some more. Maybe add some more embellishment, change the colors, maybe even change how the car handles. You can even make a couple different cars, maybe some that are faster, some that are slower and turn better. Give yourself a nice stable of cars. Because next week, we're actually going to start building the track for our cars to race on. But for now, I think we have a lot of tools at our disposal to make a really nice vehicles. Hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Please stay tuned for more. And remember, you make the game.